In the late 1990s, a Costa Rican juice company dumped 1,000 truckloads, over 12,000 tons, of orange peels onto a barren patch of national park grassland. Environmentalists called it pollution, rivals filed lawsuits, and the world turned its back. But two decades later, the very land that was written off as ruined exploded into a rainforest three times more lush than nature could manage on its own. This is the true story behind they threw 1,000 tons of orange peels into a forest. The results after 20 years are shocking, and it overturns everything we thought we knew about waste, ecology, and redemption. What happened during those silent years that transformed disaster into one of science's unlikeliest victories? Long before the first truckload of orange peels ever arrived, the land in question was already in deep trouble. In northwestern Costa Rica, the Area de Conservación Guanacaste is famous for its wild beauty, but not every corner lived up to that reputation. Decades of cattle ranching had stripped these pastures bare. The soil was packed down so tightly by hooves that even rain struggled to soak in, and the top layer was little more than dust. Where there should have been a tangle of trees and vines, there was only a brittle mat of African grass, an invasive species brought in to feed livestock. This grass formed a thick, stubborn carpet, outcompeting native plants and making it almost impossible for new trees to take root. Fires, set by ranchers to clear brush, swept through every dry season, leaving the ground even more lifeless. Seeds of native trees barely survived. Any hope for natural recovery faded with each passing year. To restore a forest here the old-fashioned were, by planting one seedling at a time, would have taken decades, if not centuries, and cost far more than anyone could afford. The land was stuck in a cycle of decline, with little chance of escape. Something dramatic would need to happen to break that pattern and give nature a fighting chance again. Negotiations between the scientists and Del Oro came down to a simple bargain. If the juice company donated a chunk of unspoiled forest to the park, they would get permission to unload their orange waste. No landfill fees, no strings attached. Del Oro signed on, and soon a parade of battered trucks started making their way up the dusty roads into Area de Conservación Guanacaste. Over the course of a year, nearly 1,000 truckloads rolled through the gates, each one heaped with sticky orange peels and pulpy rinds still slick from the juicing plant. By the end, more than 12,000 metric tons had been dumped onto three hectares of ruined pasture, a load heavier than 2,000 elephants. The operation was gritty and relentless. Drivers worked in shifts, sometimes arriving before dawn, their rigs leaving deep tracks in the brittle grass. Park workers in faded uniforms waved them into place, directing the dumping with hand signals and shouted instructions. The first layer of peels was bright and fragrant, but as the weeks went by, the piles grew taller and the smell changed. Sun-baked citrus gave way to a thick, sweet stench as the waste began to rot. Flies and wasps descended in droves, and the ground underfoot turned soft and slippery. In some places, the orange mulch was packed half a meter deep, enough to swallow a boot or stall a wheelbarrow. To outsiders, it looked like a bizarre industrial accident, but for the crews on site, each load was just another step in a strange experiment that promised to rewrite the rules of forest recovery. Inside the courthouse, the orange peel experiment became a legal battleground. Tico Fruit, Del Oro's fiercest competitor, arrived with a team of attorneys and a thick stack of filings. Their argument was simple and relentless. Dumping industrial waste, even orange peels, was an act of defilement, a direct violation of Costa Rica's conservation laws. Their lawyers cited the Ley de Conservación de la Vida Silvestre, pointing to strict language forbidding any substance not naturally occurring from entering national parks. Environmental activists joined the fray, filing affidavits about pesticide fears and ecosystem disruption. Headlines screamed about pollution and the risk of setting a dangerous precedent. Del Oro's defense, backed by Jansen and Hallwalks as scientific witnesses, tried to sway the court with data and ecological logic. They insisted the peels were clean, free of toxins, and that the project was a managed experiment, no different than composting, just scaled up. But the judges weren't convinced. Statutory text, they ruled, left no room for interpretation. The law was clear. Parks were to remain untouched by industrial byproducts, no matter the intent. In 98, the court issued an injunction, 
Del Oro was ordered to halt all dumping immediately and remove what they could. Just like that, the truck stopped rolling. The site was abandoned, the peels left to rot in silence, and the bold experiment vanished from public view, at least for the time being. After the last truck rumbled away and the court orders were filed, the orange peel site faded from headlines and conversation. No one came to check on the rotting piles, and the marker sign, once meant for research, stood alone in the heat, ignored by visitors and staff alike. For more than a decade, the area became a blank spot on the park map. Park rangers, stretched thin across thousands of hectares, had other priorities. Scientists moved on to less controversial projects. Local newspapers, once filled with outrage and debate, stopped running stories. The public's attention drifted elsewhere, and even the fiercest critics lost interest. The experiment was quietly written off as a failed gamble, an embarrassment best left unmentioned. As months turned to years, the orange waste slowly disappeared from memory. No formal monitoring took place. There were no field notes, no scheduled surveys, no curious graduate students poking around. The site was left entirely to nature, its fate unknown and unrecorded. In the absence of human eyes, the land was free to follow its own course. For a time, it seemed as if the whole episode had been erased, just another odd footnote in Costa Rica's environmental history, gathering dust while the rest of the world moved on. When Timothy Truer returned to the forgotten Orange Peel site, he didn't just see a jungle, he measured it. Working with a research team, Truer set up side-by-side -side plots and began collecting hard data. The results stunned even the most optimistic scientists. Above-ground woody biomass in the orange-treated area was 176% higher than in the control plot just meters away. More than 200 plant species had taken root, compared to the sparse handful found in untreated pasture. Soil tests revealed a surge in nitrogen, phosphorus, and organic carbon, nutrients critical for forest growth. Peer-reviewed and published in Restoration Ecology, these findings confirmed what seemed impossible. A waste dump had triggered one of the fastest, most diverse rainforest recoveries ever recorded. Numbers, not just anecdotes, told the story. News of Costa Rica's orange peel experiment traveled fast among restoration scientists. In Ecuador, teams began spreading mounds of coffee pulp across exhausted pasture, hoping for a similar comeback. Early results there showed richer soils and faster forest growth, signs that the so-called orange peel effect might work beyond just one patch of land. The story caught the attention of policymakers, too. United Nations technical guides now point to Costa Rica's project as a model for using agricultural waste to restore degraded ecosystems. Across Latin America and Africa, conservationists are testing fruit rinds, brewery grains, and vegetable scraps, all inspired by a single, unlikely gamble in Guanacaste. What started as a local controversy now shapes global efforts to heal broken landscapes. In 90, over 12,000 metric tons of orange peels were dumped onto three hectares of exhausted pasture in Costa Rica's Área de Conservación Guanacaste. The act was halted by a court injunction and left untouched for years. But when scientists returned nearly two decades later, they found a thriving forest with 176% more biomass and more than 200 plant species, far surpassing neighboring untreated land. Peer-reviewed surveys confirm the forest grew three times faster than natural recovery. Yet, key questions remain. The long-term effects on soil chemistry and the full range of wildlife impacts are still being studied. Despite these unknowns, the experiment has sparked similar projects worldwide, from coffee pulp trials in Ecuador to policy discussions at the United Nations. Today, the orange peel experiment stands as rare, documented proof that agricultural waste, when applied thoughtfully, can transform degraded land into living forest.